Stay tuned for a message from the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Steven Frederick Seagal was a well-known action movie star in the late 80s and 90s, starring in films like Above the Law, Hard to Kill, Under Siege, and On Deadly Ground. However, in the past decade, Steven Seagal's acting career has hit rock bottom, as he now stars in straight-to-video action movies. This guy is not a magician, he's not a commando, he's not a trained soldier, he's not Jesus, he's just a f***ing gypsy. He also claims to be a martial arts master, but he really isn't. He claims to be a patriot of America, though he lives in Russia and is best friends with Vladimir Putin. He's also been involved in multiple legal disputes, including that with his former personal assistant, who accused him of sexual harassment. I believe that everybody out there is out there to f*** me. In every single one of these, I do a little background on Steven Seagal, so I wanted to just look into his whole mafia extortion scheme thing. I didn't know much about it. Steven Seagal, the action film star cited as a mafia extortion target, has told investigators that after he stopped working with his longtime producer, he was ordered into a car in Brooklyn last year and shuttled to a landmark restaurant where he was threatened by mobsters. He was so intimidated, he recounted, that he agreed to turn over $700,000. Sounds pretty bad. Basically, Julius R. Nasso is a film producer who worked with Steven Seagal on many films. They had a production company together called Seagal Nasso Productions. These are the films that produced On Deadly Ground and Out for Justice. The production company later rebranded into Steamroller Productions, which produced many of these modern day Steven Seagal movies we've seen. Watch your ass. Thanks for trying to cheer me up. <laughs> Keone Waxman directed a television series called True Justice, which stars Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is also the creator of the show. Some episodes of True Justice were even extended into television movies. Certain episodes have extended cuts where they're twice as long. These technically count as movies or TV movies, so they should definitely be on Letterboxd. Anyway, I've seen a few episodes of this series. I watched a couple of the TV movie versions where they're 90 minutes long. The first one I watched was Dark Vengeance, and this one was really stupid. When it's focused on the other characters and not scenes of Steven Seagal mumbling, it's actually just like a mediocre cop show. At the end of the episode, Steven Seagal calls in one of the cops and tells him he's going to go work for his father in, like, some other precinct. Could you just do me a favor and, uh, not tell the team I'm working a case against cops? We'll just say I'm on loan to another department working a dope caper. Oh, I was just gonna tell everybody you're working a dope caper. A dope caper. We're gonna dope caper. Working a dope caper. In the episode titled Lethal Justice Part 1, Steven Seagal is taking on the Aryan Nation. This is one of the few episodes that wasn't directed by Keone Waxman. I want my prize well, back. Well, we got the Pillsbury Doughboy and Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> Pillsbury Doughboy, Casper the Friendly Ghost. You can even watch True Justice right now for free on Tubi. Many of the other Steven Seagal movies are free on Tubi as well. However, you can only access these movies in the US. I just left the US on a trip and the only way to access these movies was with a VPN, such as the sponsor of this video today, Surfshark. With Surfshark VPN, your computer can be anywhere in the world. Have you ever wanted to watch a movie on a streaming service, like let's say Netflix, but you weren't able to find what you were looking for? Instead of settling with whatever's available in your region, you can use a VPN to access region lock content. Select a server from anywhere in the world, and there you go. You can access Netflix content basically anywhere. So now with Surfshark VPN, you'll be able to watch Steven Seagal movies just to laugh at them, if that's what you like to do. I've been using it with their free trial, and I gotta say, I feel much safer when browsing online. It protects my IP from the sites I visit, it secures my online data, and it allows me to change my location to anywhere in the world. And with the 30-day free trial, you can try Surfshark out, and if you don't like it, no loss on your part. Use this code or the link provided in the description to get an extra three months free. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's get back into covering Steven Frederick Seagal's late film career. Let's do it. I watched all of the movies starring Steven Seagal directed by Keone Waxman. I feel like I need to say a little bit about each of them. One of those movies is titled Maximum Conviction. We'll let the hooker in. 
Yeah. I did. So here is the plot. Ready? When former Black Ops operative Cross, played by Steven Seagal, and his partner Manning, played by Steve Austin, are assigned to decommission an old prison, they must oversee the arrival of two mysterious female prisoners. Before long, an elite force of mercenaries assault the prison and search for the new arrivals. As the true identities of the women are revealed, Cross realizes he's caught in the middle of something far bigger than he'd imagined, like Steven Seagal's fucking gut. The movie starts and you just see Steven Seagal escorting these women. I thought that said Ben Foster for a second. I was like, what the fuck is Ben Foster doing in this? But no, it's Bren Foster. Just take a look at this scene. It's the first dialogue exchange between Steve Austin's character and Steven Seagal's character. Just some of the worst acting I have ever seen. All our guys, they're the best. The way I look at it, i will be down in Mexico in the next few days and there's- Let's not talk about Steven Seagal for a second, okay? Let's let's put Steven Seagal in a little box and put him off to the side. <laughs> let's just talk about Steve Austin. He cannot say words. HSO team just rolled in. I said we'd meet him in town in 1800. Yeah, but oddly enough, transport still hadn't showed up. And we go to the bottom you know, I seriously don't know who was a worse actor. I cannot tell. It is like the bad acting Olympics and Steven Seagal and Steve Austin are neck and neck. Can you try like enunciating or like having some emotion in your line delivery? So even though there are women in this prison, I guess this isn't a woman's prison. There's like other inmates that are men. He just strolls in, Steven Seagal, no immediacy or like any kind of tension building. He just strolls into the scene. Oh man. It's like the most boring fight scene I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh yeah! Steven Seagal is wearing his ugly ass designer glasses with the piss yellow fing lenses. My favorite. And there was some woman that was all over Steven Seagal, like, filling him up, and Steven Seagal's like, Nah, I'm not interested, babe. The lighting in this movie is just awful. It just constantly changes color. Like, this scene is blue, then they cut to the next scene, it's all fucking orange for some reason. I'm gonna go brief, man, and I'm gonna jump up ahead of you guys. You guys will go tack up, and uh, nobody will see you. Keep your eyes open, have them swim. Speak up! We gotta tack up. Here's the dead enemies and live friends and all y'all motherfuckers going home. Roger that. Let me tack up. Oh, I gotta do this movie now. They say tack up! Michael Paré plays the bad guy in this movie and he's trying to take over the prison cause, I don't know, does it even matter? Which finger? No! Ah! Finger, you cut my finger off! No way. He cut your finger off? No way. I didn't I didn't see that. Now this is um a landmark Keone Waxman action scene. The thing is you want to make like an action movie set in a prison. Great idea for an action movie. Okay. At least Steve Austin does some action in this movie, as opposed to Steven Seagal, who spends most of the movie walking around, driving a car, sitting down and just doing nothing. But then Steven Seagal shows up at a certain point to rescue the girls. So Steven Seagal calls another team in to help him. They open all the cells and all the bad guys come out of the prison to attack Steven Seagal and Steve Austin. Try to get out over here. I'll get down. Hey boss man! We know you got some women back there. Just give us one. We'll take our frustrations out on her. I got a better idea. Why don't you fuck your mama when you pet poodles? Why don't you fuck your mama when you pet poodles? You know, that might actually be why Steven Seagal likes working with Keone Waxman. Seriously, like, maybe Keone Waxman just lets him say, like, all this dumb shit. This is the fucking come to Jesus moment, and I was not born on a fucking turnip truck, man. So Steven Seagal and the bad guys have a shootout, and they both run out of ammo. They have a little dialogue exchange. What, you don't trust me? Not exactly. They fight, Steven Seagal beats the shit out of him with his horrible kung fu moves, and he throws the guy into a bunch of trip mines and he blows up. Sadly, Steven Seagal and Steve Austin don't have many scenes together in this film. They spend most of the film apart, but they do get one final scene toward the end of the film. Well, I need a minute with you, brother. Yeah, I got a minute. What you got? You know, this whole thing was about money. $200 million. 
I got the bank accounts with all the numbers right here. Steven Seagal doing his best Eric Cartman impression right here. I got the bank accounts with all the numbers right here. It's all black ops money. All off the books. Ain't nobody to give it back to. I'm giving you half. Wait, they're taking the money that the bad guys stole and keeping it for themselves? What? Shouldn't you, like, report that to someone? Listen, in about 48 hours, man, after you finish your thing, I was hoping you could meet me in Puerto Azul. You know that place, don't you? Yeah, I know the place. Where we used to do the mission debriefs. Where we used to do the mission debriefs. So that was Maximum Conviction. The next film is titled Absolution. This is another film directed by Keone Waxman, and it chronicles the story of Steven Seagal, who is a mercenary, trying to protect this woman who has been human trafficked, and also getting revenge for her sister who was killed by these traffickers. And there's also this thing where a government agency who hired him betrays him. So the plot for this kind of movie doesn't matter because it's like such a small part of the movie. Most of the movie is just padding. Steven Seagal does the trademark thing he always does when he's holding his guns. He like switches hands and like holds the gun wrong. So the actress who plays the woman who got kidnapped and her sister was killed, I think she's a good actress. But there's a lot of really uncomfortable moments in this film where Steven Seagal and her are supposed to be like this romantic kind of pairing. Oh no. Ugh. Oh, oh, oh my god, you can, oh my god. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh. If it turns out that he's really a bad guy and he's really an enemy of the United States of America, <laughs> or he's really funding terrorist activity or anything. If it turns out he's really a bad guy, he's really an enemy of the United States of America. But if you're using me for some kind of political gain, I'll come back and kill you. I just want you to know that. If you're using me for some kind of political gain, I'll come back and kill you. You know, uh, He's such a weird looking guy. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Steven Seagal always needs his body double for the shots where he's going upstairs. He can never just go upstairs by himself. Steven Seagal just doesn't do much action in the movie. He does a, like maybe five minutes total of n not even less. Please, please. What are you doing here, man? What are you doing here, man? Well, move fast and get away from here. Go on. Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. So Stephen Frederick Seagal takes this woman in and asks her what's going on and she doesn't give much information. And Stephen Seagal says, well, I'm not gonna help you if you don't give me the information I need. See, something isn't right and it's really not smart for us to go ahead and expose ourselves. I'm thinking about maybe giving her some money and sending her on her way. That's very nice of him. She does eventually tell Steven Seagal the story about her and her sister being human trafficked and how she managed to escape, but her sister was left behind and killed. I learned to not trust anybody. I lost my faith in mankind. I want to find them and I want to kill them. I need to do that for my own absolution. What are we, some kind of absolution? This movie also stars Vinnie Jones as the kidnapper. It's revealed that the guy who kidnapped them is working with that dude who hired Steven Seagal at the beginning of the movie to take out a target. They also keep cutting to these flashbacks of Steven Seagal and his, I guess, wife or girlfriend or something, and his wife is sick and dying in bed. Steven Seagal then goes on a revenge mission to kill everyone involved in the human trafficking operation. Before the woman escapes the kidnapper earlier in the movie, she steals the camera that he uses to record his victims, and she hides the camera in a nightclub. You got the camera yet? No, I'm on my way to get it now. Okay, we'll meet you. Where? It's a place called Club One. They go to the nightclub, she finds the camera and gives it to Steven Seagal before they're met with a bunch of goons. Then Steven Seagal's partner is kidnapped by the guy who hired him. He goes to rescue his partner and again he is holding his gun wrong. When he goes upstairs, it's his body double. 
In the chaos, his partner manages to escape. Steven Seagal kills the guy who kidnapped him. Now all that's left is the main human trafficker, and Steven Seagal gives him a little phone call in this scene. What about my nightclub? Two hours. Right back where it all started. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. They fight. Steven Seagal beats the crap out of him. Get up. Get up and fight, bitch. <laughs> So he kills the bad guy, Steven Seagal gets the girl in the end, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. No words need to be spoken. No words need to be spoken. Alright. Fuck you, bitch. The next movie is called End of a Gun. It's friends, man. You can smoke like in the Louvre, you can smoke anywhere here. So End of a Gun follows the character Michael Decker, played by Steven Seagal, who is a former DEA agent who hooks up with a British woman named Lisa. Steven Seagal rescues her from a guy who's beating her up in a parking lot. Later, she suggests to him that they should steal $2 million from a drug lord. He's holding his gun sideways. This movie is actually, uh really bad. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen, probably. Darkness is our friend. It's our buddy. Hello, night. It's pitch dark outside. That's our friend. Remember what I told you? The night is our friend. Remember what I told you? The night is our friend. Well, what do I do if a cop drives out? Just flirt with a man. Offer to bake him some cookies or something. Offer to bake him some cookies or something. A throwback to the cookie line. I love the fuck out of cookies. Steven Seagal, quote, 2016. I love the fuck out of cookies. I love the fuck out of cookies. Steven Seagal is mumbling through every single one of these movies, and it's just impossible to understand what he's saying. I will be right back, and here's the thing. I got a plan. It's an unusual plan. But I got your back. You'll see. You'll see what I got. He looks so weird lying on the bed like that. Toward the end of the movie, it's revealed that Lisa is actually betraying Steven Seagal. There's somebody out there who's not bent, who's not crooked, who's straight up. Someone who's not crooked, someone who's straight up. I don't really care about money. I care about honor. Then she just gets shot by Steven Seagal's friend, and that's the end of End of a Gun. <laughs> <laughs> End of a Gun is just an embarrassing, terrible movie with absolutely no tension, no reason to care. It's not even funny bad, it's just really boring. I wouldn't say it's any better or worse than any of the other Steven Seagal movies I've seen, because they're all about the same level. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Use the code in the description to get your first three months for free. I'm gonna try to be uploading more like reviews and stuff. However, so be sure to look out for, for my new content. To think I'm sure that to enjoy it. And Vladimir Putin no, Stephen, had. Get out of here! Uh, this is not the place for you. With okay? The elections, We're done with you. Get, get out of here with your conspiracy kind of nonsense. Talking about Vladimir Putin. I do not stupid. care. Get and, out of here, uh, Stephen. Get out of here, Stephen Frederick. No one wants to hear this. No one. So yeah, thank you so much, and uh, we're, we're gonna see you later. Bye-bye.